Welcome back to the OHSU Effect Inside Health and Science at OHSU. And today's show is all about the brain and the upcoming Body Worlds exhibit at OMSI. With me now is Dr. Mary stenzel Poor, an OHSU brain researcher. Good morning. Good morning. So tell me about your position at OHSU. Well, as you said, I'm a brain researcher. I work on stroke, um, but I'm also the associate dean for basic science research, which is a um, very interesting job because, especially as it relates to uh, the brain and neuroscience, we have a very strong community of neuroscientists at OHSU. In fact, um, among the top four in the country, uh, and it's a wonderful opportunity to bring together scientists who work in diverse areas of the brain and have them come together to try and solve difficult problems. And when you have that opportunity with such exciting scientists, you could really make headway um, in trying to, to really come up with new cures for difficult diseases. Yeah, tell me about your research specifically. What is your main focus? Well, my focus uh, is on stroke. My laboratory works on um, a really interesting concept where you can work to bring the immune system in to help protect the brain from stroke injury. And we started out working on um, a drug, actually, that we found protected the brain from, um, from stroke. It didn't change the risk of having a stroke, but it changed how the brain responds to the injury. And this was exciting because there are lots of conditions where you can anticipate that the brain might be injured from um, a stroke-like uh, incident. And if you could treat patients ahead of time, knowing that they're at risk, uh, you could really um, prevent brain injury. So where we are is we have built um, wonderful animal models and systems in the laboratory to really figure out how this drug works and how to make it very effective, what kind of patient population we could give this drug to. And we know that the kind of patients we want to give the drug to are patients who are going to have cardiac surgery because they're at risk of having um, a small blood clot in the brain, which is like a stroke, and we could give those patients in advance this therapy. So it sounds like this is more for the aftermath of a stroke, because um, you said it, it won't prevent it, but it can prevent what happens afterwards. That's exactly right. You, you've got that perfect. It's, um, and in fact, what it is is it, it tells the brain to not be over-responsive um, if there is a stroke. And in fact, it also tells the brain to use the good parts of your immune system to protect the cells from cell death. And so when we give this drug, we've found in our animal models that the animals do very well compared to animals that don't get treated um, in advance. And it's because their cells don't die following um, the stroke. So you mentioned the cardiac surgery patients. Mm -hmm. uh, any other population that you think could benefit from this drug? That's a great question, and there is another population. So patients who have what is called a TIA, or a transient ischemic attack, those patients are at significant risk of having a larger stroke within a two to three month period. And if those patients were seen by their doctor and they had a small stroke, we could treat them with this drug so that if they were to have a larger stroke, because we can't really change the chance of that happening, but if they did have a larger stroke, um, their stroke would not cause as much brain injury. What kind of challenges is there in your research? I mean, getting this to real patients, is that a long process? Yeah, that's an, another good question, and that's something we're trying to change. It's a long process. We have to go through many hurdles. And you may know that there have been a uh, large number of clinical trials run for new stroke therapeutics, and they haven't worked well. And we believe that's because we need to have very good animal models to test the drugs before we go to a clinical trial. And we need to figure out, you know, 
do males and females respond equally? We need to figure out the right dose, the right timing. Um, and we, that takes a long time. So what we're trying to do now is figure out a way at OHSU and other places, even the National Institute of Health is going in exactly the same direction, um, building a setting, really, an environment where scientists who are trained to do the research but aren't trained to run a clinical trial and aren't tra trained to figure out exactly how to give the drug to a patient, we can bring the experts together, put them in what we're calling a neurotherapeutic accelerator. And that's, that's like um, this incubator where you have the right kind of scientists all working together to help develop drugs. So you can bring together the expertise on drug delivery, the expertise on clinical trials, the expertise on how do you get a drug into the brain, and they can help the scientists with their new discoveries and rapidly accelerate them so they're ready to go into a, a, a clinical trial. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about body worlds. Um, do you think an exhibit like this kind of helps raise awareness uh, for the general public about brain research? Yeah, I think body worlds is fantastic because we're all terribly curious and the knowledge that you get from seeing something like body worlds and thinking about the brain is actually just phenomenal because the, the field is moving quickly and we have made significant strides forward. Body Worlds provides an, a current view that, that you know, every person can understand. It's not so complicated that you, um, it's inaccessible. It's very accessible. And it allows us to think about, well, what are the barriers in research? What are the new frontiers? And what have we recently discovered that can change our view about treatment, about the origins of disease, and trying to understand you know, what, what our vulnerabilities are? Well, just about 30 seconds left. What mm -hmm. do you see for the future in brain science and in the next 10 years? Well, I think the biggest step forward is our understanding of the genetic underpinnings that cause um, disease. So we now understand much about addiction science. Um, and, and in getting this understanding, we can develop new treatments for patients with um, brain disease. Great. Dr. Mary stenzel Poor and OHSU Brain Research, thank you so much. Thank you. And we want to let people know that uh, Body Worlds opens October 20th at OMSI. You can buy tickets at OMSI or online at omsi.edu slash bodyworlds. More of the OHSU effect next on FM News 101 KXL.